everybody. Welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. I'm your host, David Tear, and uh, this is my continuing feature on the Math Lovers book. Um, and today, this is my last uh, video on uh, Chapter 4 of uh, Volume 1, which is on complex numbers. Today, I'm going to talk about a very important result known as the Fundamental Theorem of Algebra. So anyway, let's begin. So this is going to be a pretty short video. There's just one slide here. So I'm just going to state the fundamental theorem of algebra. I'm not going to prove it because it's a pretty difficult theorem to prove. You have to know a lot of advanced math to be able to prove it. And, uh, I believe it was Gauss who was the first to prove the fundamental theorem of algebra around the turn of the 19th century. Another person who did, I don't know who was first, but I think Argand, uh, the same guy who came up with the Argand diagram also proved it. Um, but anyway, I'm just going to say what it says. So so this is a really, I think, the, one of the biggest reasons why complex numbers are so amazing. So what the fundamental theorem of algebra says is you start with any polynomial. And, and just to review, uh, if you guys don't know what a polynomial is, it's just a special type of function that's just the sum of uh, powers of, uh, of the argument finite number of powers. So a general polynomial would look something like uh, uh, a n x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 x to the n minus 1, so on. Uh, the a i's are what are called the coefficients. They're just numbers in front of each of these powers of x. So it ends like a a 1 x plus a 0. So that's a polynomial. And you guys are probably familiar with them. I mean, linear polynomials are just uh, a x plus b, if you like, and quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c. Those are the simplest examples. And they can have whatever order you want. And after that, I think they have names up to degree 10, uh, cubic, quartic, quintic, sextic. They're all based on Latin, prefixes, septic, octic, nonic, decic. I don't think they have names after degree 10. And you probably never hear the names after degree 5 or so. But uh, Anyway, that's what polynomials are. And so what does the fundamental theorem of algebra says? It says that every polynomial, no matter how big its degree is, can be factored completely into linear factors. So in other words, you can write it, you can, fact, you can always factor out the leading coefficients, the a sub n, and then uh, the rest is just a product of linear terms, x minus r1, x minus r2, so on, up to x minus rn, where these ri's are the roots so basically what it's saying, another way to say this, is that every, every polynomial, as long as its coefficients are complex numbers, has, uh, has exactly, if it's a degree n polynomial, it has exactly n complex roots, counting multiplicities. So some of these roots might be repeated. But another way to say that is you can factor completely over the complex numbers. And there's fancy ways to say that. Some people say that the complex number field, the field of complex numbers, is algebraically closed. I'm not even going to go into what that means, but this is an important uh, result in algebraic number theory. There's other fields that are algebraically closed, but that's a very useful property of fields. So, uh, and uh, by contrast, the real numbers are not algebraically closed. For instance, the polynomial x squared plus 1, that cannot be factored over the real numbers. I mean, over the complex numbers, it can. It's just x plus i times x minus i. The roots are plus or minus i. And that's kind of the reason we introduced i to begin with. Because remember, we defined i as the square root of minus 1. Another way to say that is it's uh, root of the polynomial x squared plus 1. Um, that's just another way to say that. And of course, it has two roots, i and minus i. Um, I think I should just say one more thing about that before I get off. Actually, it's impossible to distinguish between i and minus i. The definition of i is the square root of minus 1. And I think you guys remember from a real number, you know, when you talk about square roots of real number, positive real numbers, there's always a positive square root and negative square root. We usually define the thing with a radical symbol that would be the positive square root. So that is definable because we can distinguish between positive and negative numbers. But when we invented the number i, there was nothing special about i versus minus i. 
So there's actually a twofold ambiguity about what I is, <laughs> which is a little bit weird. But uh, and it's kind of funny as long as I'm talking about this, so I might as well mention something else closely related. I don't know how many guys are familiar with uh, uh, any of electrical engineering, but uh, for some reason or other, I don't know why, electrical engineers prefer to use the symbol J instead of I. And a lot of people say J is the same thing as I. It's just, I think the reason they don't use I is I stands for current. And they don't want to confuse it with electric current, which kind of makes sense. But another thing I've heard is that a lot of electrical engineers say J is not equal to I. It's actually equal to minus I. But since I said about this ambiguity of I, there's really no way to distinguish between I and minus I. So uh, it's impossible to say whether it's equal to I or minus I. Take your pick. <laughs> but anyway, it's enough of that. So, yeah, that's the fundamental theorem of algebra. It says every, every polynomial uh, with complex coefficients, no matter how large its degree, is completely factorizable over the complex numbers. Pretty beautiful result. So we don't have to go beyond complex. We, the reason, like I said, we had to invent I was so that we could factor things like x squared plus 1. Well, now we can factor everything. So... Uh, so, uh, you know, there are bigger systems of numbers than the complex numbers. I don't talk about them on my book. But you can actually define things like quaternions, octonions, uh, sidonians. Uh, you can keep multiplying the, the, the dimension by 2. Uh, you can do this infinitely many times, it turns out. Uh, each time you do so, they lose properties, though. But quaternions are pretty beautiful. Uh, um, I don't talk about them on my book, but I do really like quaternions, and I probably should make a video about them. They're very useful in terms of 3D rotations, it turns out. It turns out that the, the way that traditionally people have done, have studied 3D rotations are with things what are called Euler angles. Euler angles turn out to be pretty cumbersome, uh, and also they lead to things called gimbal lock. I talk about this in another video where I talk about 3D rotations. Uh, that was actually a problem on some of the Apollo missions. Uh, you know, when you got gimbal lock, you kind of lost control of the rotational ability of the spacecraft. And this actually happened on a few Apollo missions. But if they'd been working with quaternions, they wouldn't have this problem. Um, because quaternions work a lot nicer. But anyway, I've digressed by talking about quaternions. So that's the fundamental theorem of algebra. And that completes my video for today. That also completes chapter four, like I said, on complex numbers. Uh, the next chapter of my book is chapter five, and I believe that's on set theory. But anyway, thank you for watching. Long live math, and I'll see you guys next time.